finding an occasion to harm. For instance, when the king died a certain minister killed the young prince and appropriated the kingship himself, which brought him many unwanted consequences. Having seized the opportunity to do harm, he had a bad reputation in this life and was born in a bad transmigration in the next because of his demeritorious action. Then why would kings who seize opportunities to harm not be wrongdoers and infamous too? Assertion, by defeating the enemy in battle one acquires wealth and pleases the king, and if one dies for him in battle one will go to a high rebirth. Therefore a king should take pleasure in warfare. Answer, if giving all one has for liquor, gambling and women is not an offering that pleases the excellent and if it is also demeritorious, why consider giving one's life in battle out of anger and greed an offering to please the excellent? For what reason would one take a high rebirth through this? It is not feasible. It is like a shepherd's wife who showed her body to her father-in-law. A shepherd's wife was rude to her father-in-law while her husband was out visiting. When he came home the old shepherd told him about it and said, If she behaves rudely to me again, I won't stay in your house. Considering his father more important than his wife, and wanting to please him, the shepherd angrily told her, If you're rude to my father again, I won't let you stay in this house. In future you must do for him what is hardest to do and give him what is hardest to give. She agreed to this. The next time her husband was invited out, she served her father-in-law most respectfully. That day she bathed and massaged him with oil, garlanded him and gave him plenty to eat and drink. That night she washed his feet with lukewarm water and rubbed them with mustard oil. Then she took off her clothes and, stark naked, lay down on his bed in a provocative way. The old shepherd exclaimed, Oh! You wicked girl! What are you doing? She repeated what her husband had told her to do and said, This is what is hardest for me to give. But he replied, You did it to get rid of me. You can stay, but I am leaving right away. When her husband returned and found his father gone, she told him she had done just as he had said, but when he questioned further, she revealed what had happened. Out of respect for his father he drove her out and brought him back to the house. Giving her body to her father-in-law was not an offering. Similarly it is no offering when sentient beings sacrifice their lives in battle for a bad king. Assertion, it is reasonable to like being a king, because a king is the guardian of all his people. Answer, since a king is the guardian of his people, they follow his instructions, giving up unsuitable activities and engaging in suitable ones. However you, the king, have no guardian and, living in a morass of corruption without any guardian, your actions are arbitrary. Because you have guardianship yet have no mentor, the causes of suffering in bad rebirths hold you fast and have not released you. Therefore who would be happy about gaining kingship? It is unreasonable to be happy. Most versions read this way and when the meaning is examined it may be explained as, does not release. It seems appropriate also to say it is unreasonable to be happy because the causes of suffering do not let go and because of being without a friend or guardian. For instance, a senior monk without a superior enjoys homage paid to him. Likewise a king, having no superior, enjoys the obeisance and respect he receives. Assertion, since a king whose punishments are mild does not become famous, while one who punishes harshly is famous even after his death, it is appropriate to give harsh punishment. Answer, if posthumous fame brought some benefit, that would be all right, but even though a king is famous after his death, it brings no benefits, such as the elimination of ill deeds. If fame could wash away the stains of wrongdoing, why would you, because of your worthless actions like seizing others' wealth, and those who cook dogs, because of their awesomeness to dogs, not enjoy great fame? Therefore if one is interested in one's own good, it is not appropriate to punish harshly. It is like the following analogy, seeing a rich woman's body being given an expensive cremation, another woman thought, I will be rich too, and killed herself. A king who performs ill deeds for the sake of fame is like this. Assertion, a prince of royal caste is fit to rule while others are not, therefore pride is appropriate. Answer, it is not. When enjoyment of the power and wealth of all kingship is produced by merit, it cannot be said that this sentient being will never in any life act as a basis for power and wealth. It is therefore not appropriate to feel proud, since power and wealth belong equally to all who create meritorious actions. 
It is like a craft which belongs equally to all who learn it. Assertion, since the practice of kingship is only explained to those of the royal caste but not the other three and thus the royal caste alone should rule, pride because of caste is appropriate. Answer, castes are not distinct by way of their own entity. Humans of the first era were born miraculously from mind and were endowed with luminosity. They had miraculous powers and could travel in space. They lived on the food of joy and did not have male or female sexual organs. Later, as they began to eat coarse food, they gradually developed different shapes determined by their male and female organs, and birth from the womb occurred. Then, because of hoarding, stealing and so forth began. To protect against stealing, a man in his prime was appointed by the majority of the community to guard the fields. Those who agreed to do this work were known as the royal caste. Those who wished to subdue their senses left the towns to do ascetic practices and were called Brahmins. Those who carried out the king's orders were called the official caste, and those put to menial work like plowing the fields were known as the common caste. Thus, in the world, caste was determined with regard to the main means of gaining a livelihood. There is no innate division among sentient beings based on castes distinct by way of their own entity. It is like pots distinguished by their different contents. Each one in a set of identical clay pots is designated according to its content, such as the butter pot and the honey pot, thus it is very wrong to accept statements in treatises by sages that say even if a king uses violence it is not irreligious. Assertion, since there are four different ancestral lineages among humans, there are castes which differ by way of their own entity. Answer, it is very difficult to find anyone whose caste is certain because of being born from parents of pure caste. Since the division into four castes occurred very long ago in the world, and women's fickle minds have turned toward other men, there is no one who definitely belongs to the caste known as the royal caste. Therefore pride on account of one's ancestry is unjustified. It is like the following analogy, someone left a golden water pot in a Brahmin household for safekeeping. In the long period that followed the owners of the house changed many times and the pots changed too. Someone left a gold water pot in a Brahmin household for safekeeping. After a long time the owner returned and asked whether a member of the Brahmin family was at home. He was told that there was no Brahmin family living in the house but one of royal caste. The man asked about the gold pot the Brahmins had kept for him, but was told there was no gold pot, only a silver one. 